Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, His Royal Fan is here, and today we are continuing the How to Play series on the Fosh 155. Now, yes, this is a completely different setup. Welcome guys, this is my new live commentary setup where I'm going to be doing live commentary gameplay over three consecutive battles for the How to Play series. We're going to have this face cam right here, we're going to have the iPad controls right here. It's going to be a really different way of me doing videos, and I think a pretty unique experience overall. So I'm really excited about making videos this way, so let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the new setup. and. With that out of the way, let's continue with the Fosh 155, which is the topic of today's video. So, today I'm going to try and show you with three consecutive life battles how the Fosh plays and how you should think when playing the Fosh, because this tank has some very interesting characteristics. For one, it has troll frontal armor, but it has these awful hatches on top that always get penned. So, in a way, your armor is effective if the enemy team doesn't aim at you. Two, its gun is very troll. Its accuracy is not spectacular, and it's not helped by the fact that you have terrible gun depression and terrible gun arc, which means your blooms constantly getting reset. That's why the accuracy feels bad on this tank. Um, it has an auto reloader. It has amazing penetration. It has great DPM, decent alpha damage, amazing top speed, and horrible traverse. And it creates this really weird combination of a vehicle uh, where you can be super aggressive and you can play super passive in this vehicle, and you really need to figure out which works which in what scenario and that's what I hope to show you in today's video but before we jump into that let's look through the equipment real quickly so this is what I'm running on the Fosh 155. As I've always said, equipment is subjective to you as a player, but one thing I would say for me is a must is the calibrated shells and that's because when you're constantly being aggressive in the Fosh and you're not aiming in your shots fully, having that extra penetration is so beneficial. Does it need calibrated shells? Definitely not. Vents is a very good option. It just depends, but I feel like when I have that 407 heat pen, it's so easy just to auto aim onto a vehicle and shoot and hit them more reliably than trying to aim in for their lower plate and allow the enemy to shoot me back. So that's why I run calibrated on the Fosh. Of course, always try what you're more comfortable with. And additionally, I do run uh, optics on the vehicle, that's because I'm aggressive in the Fosh. Once again, you'll almost never catch me sitting and spawn sniping. Um, and then, you know, everything else is just kind of subjective. I do run Traverse too, because the Fosh's Traverse is awful. And with that out of the way, let's jump right on into the live gameplay. All right, so for this first game, we are here on New Bay. And looking at the enemy team lineup, they have very strong haul-down vehicles. The Kronwagen, the amx B. The Badger. These tanks thrive in a hold-on environment, but our team also has some decent tanks like a Chieftain Mark VI. Um, however, I'm not too certain about committing towards the bridge side of the map. I think I might be more useful heading on over towards the left-hand side of the map to try and support our heavies right off the bat, and then if I need to, I can rotate back towards my team and try and assist them up top. But for now, let's see what, what we can do on this left-hand side. Can we get some early shots off? You know, and just play it kind of easy. I do have a Chieftain, a Gorilla, and an IS-4 coming to support me. They already have tanks on B. We spot up the IS-7, which is good to know. Uh, and we did get spotted back, which is not so good because now they know I'm here and my surprise attack, I was hoping to get a surprise shot off on their team. It's kind of spoiled, but this IS-7 is going to poke out on me, aim for a track shot, and pull back. Just being a little bit of patient there. And let's see, we might even be able to get a second shot into the IS-7, unfortunately. Uh, on the Traverse, the Fosh's accuracy is not good enough to allow that. Now. We know they have medium tanks yoloing back through our spawn. I think the play for me is to cover our spawn. I think if our medium tanks come back to support, I can really help them on this side. The T-54 is coming. The Gorilla 15 is already providing some support. They have a lot of tanks out of the fight. What I can really do here is push with my team and start picking up some kills over here. So let's see, the E-50M should be right around the corner. We're going to put a shot into him and then pull back and wait. So we know where the Kronwagen is. He's kind of by the bridges towards the mid. E-50M might poke again. Now that's a Badger. I did not want to face a Badger. All right, this just went from an okay situation to a not so fun situation. They have a Badger here. They have an E-50. They have a 268. They have a Kron covering mid. But what I can really do here is get behind this Badger. And if I can do that, I'm going to cause this Badger a lot of trouble, right? Because even if he's in a good spot, the spot is no longer good the moment I get behind him, right? So I'm going to pull behind this Badger, shoot him at the HE, and we're going to push him out in front of my whole team. So I just pretty much flanked the Badger. That was all I was doing here. And I know I'm definitely going to get shot in return by, like, the E50, and I'm going to lose some HP here. That's just a given. But I think 
overall, the benefit I was able to provide my team by flanking this badger far outdoes the HP I lost there. So I'm hoping these guys can pick up the kill soon. There is a there is a T92 here. We're going to put a shot into him and continue pushing forward onto this T92. We've already dealt probably closer to 4k damage with the ram on the badger, which isn't too nasty of a result indeed. Now this T92 is trying to run away. We're going to put a shot into him. We do jam his turret, which is perfect for me because now he's unable to really shoot me. Should be able to turn in time. We do manage to get the turn. E50 gets the ram kill. This was a good game. And I think this was a perfect example of how you should play the Fosh. I didn't just YOLO into the enemy team, but I pushed with my team. The moment I saw those mediums coming behind us, I realized, hey, I need to assist in killing these meds. There's no point in me sitting against haul down heavy tanks trying to out-trade them. That is just not what the Fosh is good at. Excuse me, Gorilla. Um, it just doesn't do well in that environment. It gets penned way too easily. What you need to do is provide those aggressive pushes on the flanks where the enemy team doesn't anticipate you'll be. And you'll be extremely effective in that manner. So, we're going to push up onto this Kronwagen. Hopefully, we can break 5k this battle. And that is the plan. Now, the Kronwagen is turning around here, unfortunately. He's going to get the first shot in, probably. Oh my gosh, we bounce off of his upper plate. But he also bounces off of me. So, the result could be worse. I'm going to wait till he shoots twice. I'm going to reload my clip, actually. He's really secure there. And I don't think I can push on him. Not while, not while he has support there. I need to wait from the clip out at least two shots. Okay, he shot at the grill. He can't be fully reloaded from to enough to kill me. So I'm going to start pressuring this crown vog, and we're going to put a shot in his upper plate there. And we're going to continue pressuring the crown wagon before hopefully he's able to kill us. I'm going to put a shot into his side. He does ricochet us again. So our armor is actually being a little bit effective. I'm going to get out of the way at the E50M so the E50M can pick up the kill here. Come on, guy. You got this. E50M should have the kill. Oh, E50M bounces. Let's go. Maybe I can get another kill. Lit. Okay. That game was beautiful. I'm happy with that. I think that was a great, great example of the Fosh 155. Just being flexible, pushing around, catching those medium tanks off guard. That's what I did. And I really caught that, fo that badger off guard. Right? I came in, I put a double clip in him. He was holding off three tanks there. And I would have to poke every time into a crossfire to shoot him because the T92 was there, the E50 was there, and the Badger, and they were just all kind of covering each other, but by instantly flanking around that Badger, I was able to make him panic push forward, my team managed to kill him, and then we continued the aggression. Perfect example of what you should be aiming to do with your Fosh. Now, you're not always going to get those types of situations, right? Some games, you can't possibly be that aggressive. You have to be a little more passive, but if you can... Try and find those little weaknesses in the enemy's lineup and exploit it. So, for this second battle, we're here on Fort Despair, and this is not an ideal map for the Fosh, right? It is really close haul down engagement everywhere on the map for the most part, and it's really close quarters combat, which makes your armor a little bit difficult to utilize. What I am going to do for the start of this game is spot up on the ramps. I think I can be very useful by spotting up on the ramps for initially at the start of the game, and then, you know, relocating if I need to. So hopefully I can get some early shots off. There is the Progetto 65. Unfortunately, the gun isn't accurate enough to hit that, and I'm just going to pull back. So now we have an idea. The Evil 100's going this way, the Progetto's going this way, and you know what? My whole team is super aggressively pushing through encounter cap. Now, I don't mind that. What I am going to do, however, is I'm going to pre-wait for the enemy team to push on this side. So I'm going to tell this WZ to hold his position. I'm going to provide a nice crossfire over for this WZ so the enemy team, they can't just YOLO out randomly and freely on my entire team. So here's the E100. We're going to put a shot into him. Unfortunately, the gun isn't doing a very good job about that. It does ricochet some shots. And this is honestly not the most ideal situation, if I'm honest with you. I think... There's definitely more ideal situations for the Fosh. I should have heat around there. I'm going to pull back. Now, the ones you want to be... Please don't YOLO one to one Please, 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 please don't YOLO. Guys, just, just hang, hang in there. I just need my team to stay alive here. I am a huge threat to the enemy team, right? Just sitting here, I am a massive threat to the enemy team. But I just need my team not to die. That is super important. So, I'm just going to continue holding this flank. My team should be flanking pretty well by now, right? And we'll just see what I can do. We're going to load a heat shell up. And we do take a track shot there, which I'm happy to, to take. I7 lost his gunner. Now, I7's turret is penetrable with heat. And we can see the E50M is clearly going for our flank. So, I want to call that out to my one to one buddy. Okay, you know what? The E50M is running away. I think, to be fair, the best play for me right now is to push up on this E100. We're going to aim for a track shot here. Hopefully, the one to one can shoot him. And we're going to use this E100 kind of as a shield from the IS-7. I want to see if... No! 
Oh, the one to one boat. Dude, what are you doing? He, he drove right in front of my gun, which is really unfortunate. Okay, I need to take some shots here. As much as I don't want to lose HP, I need to keep our one to one into the, in this game. We're going to go for the E100. He is a much easier kill. Now, unfortunately, the E100 survived this, but we're still going to go for the kill here. I can deal with an I-7 easily. E100's a much bigger problem. So we're up 3-3. Our 1-2-1's probably going to go down. The enemy's E50M is very healthy, but we still have a very healthy Progetto 65, which is good for my team. So the I-7's showing me the rear of his turret. We're going to aim at that. I don't want to response it. We damage his armor. I'm, okay, I'm pressuring this I-7 here. This way, he cannot traverse fast enough to kill our 1-2-1, right? That's the goal here. Perfect, we were able to push him up. Unfortunately, the I-7 was able to grab the kill there, but we did a pretty good job on this flank. We actually didn't lose a single hit point here. And that's important because this is going to be a very rough fight that we're going to be up against. They have a Yag, a T-95, an E-50M. Hopefully our Progetto will take some of the shots, but I can also take some shots if necessary. And this was just me playing the Fosh a little bit more passively, passive aggressive. I wasn't really pushing until I realized the enemy team was really weak. You know, and I was just kind of hanging out, chilling, having a good time, trying to figure out how I can be helpful to my team. I'm going to go all the way around these vehicles here as they're all looking the wrong way. Hopefully I can pick up a kill on the T-95 first or the E-50M. Really depends on whichever one could spot it up first. They're all on this side of the map. So here's the E-50M. And we're going to kill the Yag here. We do pick up a kill onto the Yag Panzer 100. And the Progetto should theoretically be able to pick up that kill. Very nice. We're going to pull in on this T-95. Oh, we, we bounced that. I mean, it looked like it penned, but it must be some spaced armor there. So, yeah, we're just going to continue side-hugging this T-95. I'm going to break the side-hug so I can actually deal some damage. We're going to load up some heat. There's not much this T-95 can really do about it. So, we're going in for the push on the T-95. Hopefully, we'll be able to pick up the kill here. We do pick up the kill. Awesome. Another excellent example of how you can play the Fosh 155. Was it a perfect game? By no means. It was no means perfect game. I missed a lot of shots that game that I wish I did not miss, but you know, that's not always the case. And by the way, the ace bar was just reset. Usually you can't ace a Fosh with 4,000 damage. I'm just saying that right now. Um, but back to the game, you saw what I did there. I read what the enemy team was doing and what my team was doing. My team, for the most part, was pushing really aggressively through the encounter cap. Their heavy tanks got spotted on this side of the map, and of course, I had support from one of the tier 9 heavies. What I could have done there is just run all the way around. But what would happen is those heavy tanks would just freely push straight in on my teams on encounter tap, and we would get mega crossfired and killed. I figured it'd be a much better bet for me in that situation to pull back, hold our spawn, and work down those heavies and hopefully kill them, which it, we did eventually do. So I would say a pretty good game overall, and that was just an example of also how you can play the Fosh 155, more as a holding tank instead of so much as an aggressive pushing tank like the previous game. All right, so for this third battle, we are on Alpenstadt, and the enemy team is extremely light. They have two light tanks, two medium tanks, um, a mo two mobile heavies, I guess, and a Yag Tiger. So they don't have a ton of armor. And our team also doesn't have a ton of armor. So what I'm going to do for the start of this battle is I'm probably going to go up towards the inside of town. I don't like sniping in the back. One thing you'll notice about me in the Fosh is I never snipe, right? And that's just, it's against my playstyle to just sit at the back of the map trying to snipe at the enemy team. Now we do get a good view of what's coming this way. There's the, there's the WZ-121. And let's see if we can bounce this KBFZ-70. That's kind of the goal right now. Um, even if we don't, we're going to keep shooting this WZ-111-14. And I have very little to no support. It was an aggressive maneuver on my part. And I might take more damage here, which is unfortunate. I'm going to lose a lot of HP at this point of the game. But hopefully we can hit that. We do hit it, but didn't pen. All right, so this is not looking so good for me. I've lost a pretty good amount of HP so far. A Waffenträger, and you know, the Waffenträger is here to support me, which is good, but we know they have three or four tanks on this side of the map, right? So they have the WZ, the, sh the KPFZ-70, and the Tiger. I was a little too aggressive there, and my HP is definitely feeling it. So the question is, what should I do in this situation? I honestly think I should just completely give up on this side of the map because I have no support for my team here. I'm not going to completely give up. I actually, I take that back. I'm going to need to pull out from this side of the map and get some more distance onto this engagement where I'm not just sitting in front of their whole team where they're looking down on me on my easy to pen armor. I'm just going to hold this side of the map from a little bit more of a distant engagement. I think that'll be a lot better for me in this situation. So. 
let's see what type of shots we will be able to get. Now we find the Yag Tiger, which is great. Yag Tiger's not looking. We're just aiming it on him. We're gonna put a shot into him. Did I say we're gonna put a shot into him? Because the, the Fosh's gun had a much different plan than mine. Okay, we're gonna put a shot into him now. There we go. And you can see, even at that angle, he easily just went through my tank's armor profile. So, you know, if the enemy have time to aim, they're gonna go through your armor. That's just the sad truth of the Fosh 155. If they don't have time to aim, you're actually gonna bounce quite a few shots. So, let's see, if this Yag Tiger is aggressive and pulls forward, as I think he will be. There he is, we're gonna put a shot into him. 579, very good start. We're gonna pull back into cover. And then we're going to try and just see if we can get some shots on this KPF Z70. My team's actually doing a pretty good job this battle, so I'm happy about that. We're going to put a shot into the KPZ. He is a bit overextended over here, so I'm going to push in on the KPF Z70. The game's won at this point. So this wasn't a super fantastic game. It was me kind of spotting up town, realizing I was way overmatched, and then relocating to a safer position when I needed to be. We're going to put a shot into the KPZ. We do 700. That is a nice high roll. And we're going to continue the Blitzkrieg on him. Or you know what? Yeah, we will continue pushing on him. We're just going to take a different approach. So, we should be able to get kill. Perfect. And the 62A is probably going to die long before I get there. But we still did 3.7k damage. Once again, it was a much more passive example of me playing the Fosh. So you had the example like the first game where I was super aggressive. And then you have examples like this game where it's a lot more passive. I waited a lot more. Made sure... You know, I wasn't yoloing to a massive crossfire. Oh, that was a nice double kill. Anyway, so that's kind of my video on how I'd recommend playing the Fosh. I think it kind of hit all of the marks of how the Fosh 155 performs. You saw the gun troll me quite a few times. That is the Fosh's gun. You saw the armor profile fall apart quite a few times, especially that last game. Even a stock tier 9 heavy tank like the WZ-11-14 easily goes to the hatch. So if the enemy team has time to aim, they're going to pen you. Your traverse speed, not so great, but what you really have is this mobility, 1000 clip potential, and these 550 deep damage shots um, with 3000 DPM. And you can really utilize that, both in two different physical forms of playing. So you can be really aggressive and pushing on flanks and helping to initiate those pushes, for instance on the, um, the New Bay game where I did that, or you can be a lot more passive like the fort despair game or even this game where i was semi-aggressive and semi-passive so i spotted up the the heavy tanks took some shots and i was like i lost so much hp so i pulled all the way back just to wait for the enemy team to push into me there's no need for me to yolo there i did more than enough damage for my team you know we did over 4k damage for all of these games i think a pretty solid result and that is just what the fosh is capable of you need to know its strengths you need to know its weaknesses and if you can work around those strengths and weaknesses you'll perform quite well in the vehicle it's all about changing your thought process with this vehicle you're not just a td you're not just an aggressive td that yolos you have to think of each situation what map you're on what tanks you'll come up against because this tank is great when it can bully vehicles. If not, you need to reconsider your playstyle. So I hope that video was helpful for everyone. Um, and please let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think of the live commentary gameplay? It's definitely a bit different for me. I'm planning on doing a lot more videos this way. I just need to work on perfecting my commentary. Uh, it's, it's a completely different spectrum of commentary compared to what I was doing before. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I hope you were able to learn a thing or two about the Fosh 155. You guys are awesome and I hope you all have a wonderful day.